You walk into your studio, bathed in warm sunlight. You stand before your blank page, eager to paint those flowers you foraged over the weekend. You pick up your palette, excited by the possibilities, and with trembling hands you dip your brush into the colours, not quite sure if you're doing the right thing. That didn't work, let's try again. Nope, still not the colour I was after. Why can't I get this? Just as you're about to give up, a gentle breeze from an open window rustles the flowers, and the petals sway gracefully. They catch your eye, and you realise it's not about perfection, it's about capturing the essence. This was me a while ago. I would actually be scared of mixing colours, and I just didn't have the confidence to. Here are my personal favourite colours to use for flowers, straight out of the bottle, no mixing needed. I thought it would be a good idea to go through the colours in terms of how you can use them to paint flowers, and so also you could see how all the colours mix together on the page. And stay till the end to see my swatching turn into art. Okay, so as you can see I've got quite a few different makes and brands of watercolors but these are the colors that I would say would make the perfect colors for flowers without any mixing needed. So I've got some tubes and some liquid watercolors here and I'm going to start off with the pinks and the reds and the really warm tones first. So the first color I'm going to start off with is this one here and this is the Opera Rose by Winsor & Newton. So I like to use my tubes in this way, um, but you don't have to use them like that. You can um, use them in a palette. I'll show you in a minute how. I'm just going to start off by doing some basic standard swatching. I like to squeeze the tube in the palette and then just add a little bit of water and get the consistency that I'm happy with. So this one is the Oprah Rose, and then I'm going to go in with this one here, which is the Eco line, and it is pastel red. So I'm always going from light to dark because I really don't want to muddy up my water. And with liquid watercolors, you don't have to add water. You can if you want to, but you really don't have to because they are designed to bleed and they act like water themselves, so you don't need to add any water to help them behave more like fluid. So the next one I'm going to go in with is this one here, which is the Apricot, and it's the Ecoline brand. and then it starts to get a bit darker. So these colours are really great for foxgloves, um, peonies, roses, dahlias, anything with that orangey red pink tone to them. So then it starts to get a bit darker and I go in with this colour here and I'll show you what that is in a minute. This is a really one of my favourite go-to colours. So this is the Light Rose Eco Line. Then I'm going to go in with the another one of my very, very favourite ones that I always end up using and reaching out for is the Dr. PH Martin's Hydrus. And then I'm going to go in with this one here. So this is the cyclamen colour and it's more of a pink with a hint of purple, a very cool pink. And then I always find that I need to have a very dark colour that just helps to make all the other colours pop. So this one is mahogany. By Dr. PH Martins, and I always reach out for this one as well. So these are the warm tones that I would recommend in terms of peonies, roses, foxgloves, dahlias, anything that has that warm tone to it. Now what I've done here is that, so you've seen me use mainly liquid watercolours, but I have 
um, used one tube. I like to use tubes because I feel like they help all the other colours connect together and they're softer and they help take the eye from one colour to the other in a very soft fluid way. So we've got this colour here which I which I like to use which is the Potter's Pink in Winsor & Newton brand and it's a very soft pinky brown I'll just add it here and I like to think of the this colour in particular to be a connecting colour I'll talk to you about connecting colours in a minute so this is the pinks and the reds mainly done and then we move on to the yellows so I'm going to start off with this colour here and it is actually the Cotman Watercolours student brand from Winsor & Newton and I really love um, the softness of this yellow. A lot of people say that Cotman is not as good as the original and it d really depends on how you're using it. So the way that I use tubes, it varies. It varies from me using them in this kind of way to me using them and diluting them with water in this way and each way is different and it can give you a different result and I'll just show you an example of what I mean by that so I'm going to use this tube here and I've diluted it and I'll tell you about the colour in a minute but I just want to show you an example of how it gives you a different result so this is very watered down and if I show you the other way of using it, it gives you this colour here which is very strong and vibrant. It almost looks uh, similar to the liquid watercolours. So these are the same tube but used in a different way where this one's been diluted and this one has been used directly from the tube or in the palette that you just saw earlier. Going back to what I was saying about this Cotman brand is that people say that it, it's not as good as the original um, but it really depends on how you use it. So I I like to dilute it in this kind of way and and, I, and it, works, it works completely fine for me. But what they say, what people have said and what I have found personally is that when you are trying to reactivate this paint, it doesn't reactivate as well as the professional brand. So the way that I use it actually works for me and you have to try and um, get to know its properties and what you like about it. So, so it's actually quite a nice brand to use if you're using them in this way. Going to the yellows now, this is the lemon yellow and it's from the student brand Cotman and it's actually quite soft. It's a soft yellow which I really love because I always think that when I when I use yellow I don't want anything that's so bright and so saturated in color and vibrant I always like my yellows to be softer and then I have this one here golden brown and this one is more of a brownie tone it's quite thick in its consistency it's not as watery as the other liquid watercolors but I love what comes out here and then I've also got sepia and this one is deep sepia or sepia deep and it fall it falls under the yellow category but um I would actually use this as a connecting colour and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Okay, so we've gone through golden brown, deep sepia and I've gone through this lemon yellow here. Now we're going to go through the purples and blue tones and then we're going to finish off with the greens. So these yellows would work really well with um, daffodils, primrose, um, marigold, wildflowers as well even um, and small filler flowers if you just want to fill up your page um, these, these, these colours would work really well 
And then we move on to the purples. So I'm going to go to this color here and I'm just gonna go through, I'm just gonna go over the one I've just done. And this is one of my favorite tube brands. It's Michael Harding. And this one is Violet Imperial. So I love using um, these paints and I've only just been introduced to them, but I love what happens when you add water. And all these things that I've said so far, I feel like they're all great ideas for future videos. So um, stay tuned because I will be talking about um, the different brands of watercolor. Again, I'm just going to go over this. And then I'm gonna go with this color here, which is lavender. It's the same brand, Michael Harding. This one seems to be a little bit more thicker and opaque. And then this one, hyacinth blue. And although this appears to be quite a vibrant blue color, it actually dries a little bit lighter than that on the page. So the blue and purple tones that I'm using are great for irises, hydrangeas, pansies, bluebells, lavender, forget-me-nots, um, delphiniums. So now we are going to go in with the greens. And I like to have um, a couple of greens that I work with. And the first one that I'm gonna go through is this olive green by Dr. PH Martins and I always find myself reaching out for this one it's quite rich in color has a lot of depth to it and then again I've got this forest green by Michael Harding and I love his colors they are for some reason they have so much depth to them and this one has actually come out this color on here but adding water it seems to have changed there seems to be quite a few different pigments that they put in the colors um that give a really interesting lovely little surprises when you add water which is why i love his brand so much so i'm going to just give this another good mix And when you add water like this, this is how it comes out. But this is what happens when you take it straight out from the tube or you actually use the paint directly on the paper and you add water to it. So you get quite varying results depending on how you use them. And then this is the last of the greens. This is a olive green by Winsor & Newton. And has this really beautiful leafy green color that comes out so we've gone through all the colors here and these for me I find are the perfect floral color palette for me okay coming up next I'm going to be showing you how I take these colors and I swatch them in a more creative intuitive way to create a piece of art and I'm not calling this art I'm calling this swatching so that it feels a lot more intuitive and it just feels like mark making so I'm still trying to show you the potential of these colors and how they can work together so you get an idea of how you could use them for future flower painting sessions before I do that I would really love if you could like and comment on this video if you found it useful so far Okay, so if you are used to swatching in a traditional way, then um, why not try intuitive swatching? And it's my version of playful mark making. And I like to try and take every opportunity I can to make playful marks and testing out your colors is the perfect way to just play around to see how those colors work well together and how they merge and react with each other on the page. And it's just so nice to see um, color harmony taking place when you are just playing around. 
So speaking of color harmony, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about connecting colors and I'll do that while I play around with my swatching. So I'm going to start off first with getting some colors down on the page and I'm going to go in with this magenta and I'm just doing random dashes and I'm going to go in now with some water to see how the water reacts to this magenta. Then I'm going to go in with some lighter pastel red and just allow those two colors to touch and see what happens. And I'm not thinking too much about it needs to be you know, floral, it needs to look like a flower and petals. I am just really loosely dabbing on the color. Now I'm going to go in with some yellow and a bit of this light rose and add some water. And I mentioned connecting colors earlier, so um, I find that sepia, browns and greys work really well with all the colors. They bring cool colors and warm colors together and that's why I like to incorporate a, a bit of each in my work. Um, so this golden brown. Now I'm going to go in with a bit of this and a bit of I'm not thinking too much about composition or anything like that. This is, this is just to see how the colors merge and, and work well together. So I'm using this um, six round and it is a sable brush. So very, very loose. I'm, I'm not even thinking too much about the marks I'm making. I think we need a bit of this lavender up on the top. And a bit of this brownie pink. I'm going to go in with a bit of light rose again. And I really treat this as just a fun, relaxing exercise to see how the colors work well together. I'm just going to let that color bleed in there and there. And I hope this encourages you to be a little bit more relaxed when you sit down to paint. So I'm going to use a bit of this golden brown. And you can really vary your marks with how you use the paint to see what happens as well. So sometimes I'll do small dashes and then sometimes I'll do big expressive marks. I love what's happening here. It's so unpredictable. Um, I love Michael Harding paint, um, especially the tubes because they there's so many little surprises that come out that I'm really not expecting. So I'm gonna go in with a bit more of this and just add hints of lavender.
haven't got enough yellow, so I'm just gonna So I'm using the same brush, I haven't changed anything else apart from the way that I'm making these marks. And hopefully you can see that these make a really lovely palette for flowers. So even though you probably don't like the idea of mixing colours or you don't feel confident enough, this is a way that you can do it. Um, you can actually mix the colours on the page and see what happens. And it's just a fun way of mark making and playing around. And who knows what beautiful piece of art can come out from it. I hope you found this video useful. You might like to try using some of these colours for yourself and let me know how you get on. Thanks so much for watching and see you again soon.